just it's just so important it's just before you even get out of bed to go to the bathroom and have a cup of coffee just take your notebook and write 15 minutes and and so much will come out of it even if it's just i don't want to get out of bed today and life sucks things grow from that we need to re- release it get it all out kind of give yourself a clean slate you did your complaining you did your whining so you don't bring it into the day people don't get that but it's so important to to writing and other people people inspire me and after i did all those monologues i sent them to my favorite writer and and asked him what he thought and he wrote the forward to my book glenn alterman who's still my favorite my favorite favorite writer all right you did mention you were going through a divorce during this time obviously your art your acting your writing played a big part in helping you get through it Explain. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Well, it helped me get it through, but it also I felt like it was the beginning of it. Beginning of it, I started to write these monologues, and I think my husband at the time was in shock that it was that was inside of me, mm-hmm. and there was a sense of I guess jealousy or confusion, like who I really was. Um, but it it helped me maintain everything because then all of a sudden things started to go wrong, and, and the marriage was ending. And here I was with a little boy that I had to take care of on my own. And the acting gave me the strength that I needed and the writing. I just kept writing and writing. So the book was published during the very beginning of the divorce and the in- insanity of it and divorce court and being dragged out for seven years. And that's how my children's book actually came about called Storm of Colors. Uh, it's about a little boy stuck in between two divorcing parents. So I remember my ex-husband's lawyer holding up my monologue book going, did you read this book? She's crazy. And did you read these monologues? And the judge was like, oh, can I see that for a second? She's like, wow, you wrote a book through all this insanity? Good for you. She goes, I'm not an actor and I wouldn't know, but it looks to me that some of these pieces in here are pretty amazing and good for you. And that was all I needed to continue through the insanity of it. And, um, my son's also a writer as well. Wrote his first little story at the age of four, so uh, it's been a create. It's a creative outlet for both of us, and um, I I believe it again. Writing just like acting is connected, and it's healing, and I can't say enough about it. It's it's all I know, and I wish more people did it because I truly believe it works. So, how did Three Stage Studios come about? Um, it was really by accident I know I always wanted to get my studio back on its feet and financially it wasn't looking like that was going to happen for a while Um, my son being a senior in high school and getting ready to go to college and and the financial burden of all of that and surviving Um, I was teaching in another theater and my students thought, oh my, you're so good, you should have your own studio. And I thought, well, yeah, that would be nice, but financially, I can't. And the downside of it is uh, a couple of my students got involved, one who wanted to be the financial end of it, and one that wanted to be more of the, uh, I would say, the builder of it, physically building it. And also, he was looking to get into something um, on a creative end. So I never thought partners were a good idea, but I did start that way. But the, right off the bat, the first partner was gone mm-hmm. because um, it wasn't something he didn't seem like he really wanted to be involved with. And then the second partner, which I thought we got along really well, had decided just after 11 weeks of opening that he couldn't handle it and um, decided to to kind of strip the studio and leave. Well, I just kept going. I never stopped. And I didn't really think about it too much. It was kind of just kind of uh, closing up the ends of things because now you're attached to someone else. But, um, you know, I said how I felt. And this is, listen, I'm an open person. I'm, I, I tell people the, the deal and I've been hurt in the past and, and no one's going to stop me from teaching and living my creative dream. You either move forward with me or or not and it, I kind of even at my age actually uh learned to grow up pretty quickly mm. you know I'm not I'll be honest business is not something I really want to deal with I just want to be creative but you also have to deal with the business side too and um somehow I'm making it work and I just moved on 
not even I couldn't didn't have time to think about it. And it was just, just like you just opened just in, in June of last year, right? Yeah, well, June 2018, and again, people. It's really sad because people want to give up. People give up very easily, and it choke. Why do you think so? Fear. Mm. Um, fear and again a lack of uh, communication and allowing themselves to be human listen I'm far from perfect that's not what I mean but um, when something goes wrong like one thing people are just like okay that's it I'm done no that's not life life is full of ups and downs and it's not there's nothing wrong with being sad or taking a break or having moments but I guess I just don't understand that because there's been so many things in my life that uh, tragic things and loss and abandonment and I could have given up um, what is that saying to my child what is that saying to my students and if I can walk and I can talk and I can breathe and my body's moving I'm going to be doing it and and I just don't listen I, I'm afraid too but fear drives me mm. and it propels me and acting is scary writing is scary putting yourself out there is scary and again people will like you and people will be jealous of you and and i think people still say you know how dare she open a studio a single mom with no money <laughs> you know that she keeps going and she keeps going there's no other choice for me and i'm and i found my passion such a long time ago that um i'm not gonna let it stop me you can try and people have sadly um but no no definitely Excellent. not I don't don't give up. Just talk it out, work it out. I don't understand the giving up part. But you use your art to help you. Yeah. It. Well, it's yeah, creativity is just to me when I, especially when I see creative people give up. And like I said, people say I used to be an actor. Mm -hmm. I used to be a, a musician. I used to be a writer. I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. But I think it lives inside you. It's it's in your skin. It sits on the surface and. Um, you might have writer's block here and there, other things, but there's ways around that. And again, just being human and allowing yourself to just be in the moment and work off the other person. There's always something to work off of. If you can't find something or you're feeling stuck, reach out to another person um, and, and grab hold of that and something will come of that. But don't give up. Mm -hmm. Don't give up on people. Don't give up on dreams. Don't give up on your passion. Uh, what's next? Is there some kind of uh, divorce program you're working on? Yes. Yeah, so, well, I've been working on um, for some time now my book, Storm of Colors, which is a divorce program that that uses acting to help children get through um, a difficult time, such as divorce, and also to help keep families intact. And it's going to be called Storm of College. It's been something that's in the process. And eventually I'd like to bring it into schools mm. uh, so that kids can actively act out their emotions and their feelings. And I also made up a bracelet called Stop the Storm, Let Me Be Me, so that the mm. kids could wear them. And when the parents fight or argue or try to put the children in the middle, like, what was your dad last night? What is your mom doing? What is she spending money on? They just hold up their wrist with the bracelet on it. And the parents sign a contract saying when they see the hand go up, they stop talking. Because not every child is verbal or some children are young and, and they can't be verbal. And it's very damaging what what we do. It's not a child's fault that you're getting divorced. Um, and again, it's kind of the same thing with creativity. You you have to talk it out. You have to communicate. You know, sometimes things end. Sadly, they end. I still don't understand that. Like, to me, is if you're in love with someone or you're friends with that person, there's a reason why you got together to begin with. So why not find a way to still be connected? Don't have to live together. Don't have to be in a relationship together. But why can't you still be friends, especially when there's children involved? And um, I wanted to be able to heal children, and I want to be able to bring the program to school so where they can act out scenes and monologues and, and the parents could actually watch that, the progress of what's happening and what these children have been hearing. And maybe it'll wake people up going, oh my goodness, is that what I'm doing? And is that how I sound? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's way more to it. There's stop signs involved and, and other, other tools that the parents could use, but using acting and creativity and writing and music so that the kids could release what they're feeling. Um, and my book was illustrated by a 15-year-old, wow. and he's not now in his 20s, but 
um, he was young when he did the illustrations and, and I think that that's possible. I want that to be possible for kids too. And divorce is, um, not a good thing, but it could be an easier thing. Do you think we all have an artist inside of us? Um, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I think there's some people, like even people who do manual labor for work or are accountants or lawyers or doctors. Yes. I think, again, they're sometimes afraid to show that inner heart, that inner creativity, because they think they won't be able to do what they do. Um, and I think it would just make everybody softer and kinder and more loving if they would show that sign of them just because, you know, you have to make money um, to survive doesn't mean you can't be creative and compassionate and human. Mm-hmm. How nice the world would be if everybody let that out. Yeah, I, I definitely think everybody, you hear people all the time saying, oh, I'm not creative, but they decorate these beautiful cakes or, you know, I'm not creative, but um, they paint houses. That's being creative, you know, or even like fixing a broken sink in a creative way or, you know, maybe you don't have the tools, but you stop it up with paper towels. That's being creative, <laughs> you know, or fixing a flat tire in a, in a different way that no one's ever done before. That's being creative. Anything that's that you came up with is creative. If that makes any sense. Where can people connect with you online? <laughs> Well, you can go to my website, which is www.3stagestudios.com. Um, you can send me a message uh, that way. Is it and, is it three spelled out or three? As yeah, oh, I apologize. Yeah, three. The number three, mm-hmm. stagestudios.com. And you can always reach out and send me an email that way. I'm also on Facebook and I'm on Instagram. Instagram is three stage studios as well as Facebook. Um, you can always send me a message. Either way, I am. What is it? An I am or a, a DM? <laughs> a DM, an I am, a BM. A, a no. PM, yeah. <laughs> as long as you're not an SMF. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, you All can right. definitely reach out to me with questions or whatever you want. That's whatever great. you want to talk about. Well, I just have to say, I, this has been great. I know you, but I never really got to know you and it's great uh, that I'm learning all this stuff and you're sharing your story with many people out there wanting to say you know what maybe I do want to try acting and they can learn from this story or maybe I want to try writing and teaching yeah. teaching too and teaching too you know yeah. I think a lot of artists limit themselves like oh, I'm just a painter Oof. I'm just a writer no there, no <laughs> there's no there's no limits there really isn't there just there's so many but it's like it's like so many facets, so many areas that you can explore. Um, that's what's great about creativity. There's no cap on it. You don't have to put a lid on it. it just keeps overflowing if you allow it. Exactly. And one final question. Mm-hmm. Why does art matter? It's because it heals. It, it heals and it helps other people. Um, it saves lives. It really does, and, and it, 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 the growth of it for children and and other people is just, it's never ending. It's endless. Great answer. Lori, thank you so much for your time, your story, and sharing. Thank, <laughs> thank you, Alex. I appreciate it. Thank you for allowing me to share. I, I love it, and I hope people get something out of it. And if they need more, just get in contact with me. I'm sure they thank will. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. There you have it. I told you it was going to be a good one. You heard it right from Story Lori. And what can we learn? What can we take away from what we just heard? Lori said she had trouble fitting in and not knowing where she belonged. A lot of us artists go through that because we're different. We don't do things the same way. We create differently. We look at the world in a whole unique vision from everybody else. And of course, it can be a struggle. Most of us want to fit in. We want to be liked. And it was through her love of her art that she found out where she belonged. Finding acting. Finding out that acting isn't a way out, but a way in. It's also about being present. 
which is also a good life lesson.